It rained in England, resulting in a thrilling race. First, congratulations to Lewis Hamilton for being in the right place at the right time and managing those tires. But the real excitement came from the pit wall, where McLaren's strategists put on a masterclass in how to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. When faced with the difficult decision of choosing between medium and soft tires by the end of the race, they boldly opted for the latter. Because who needs grip and longevity when you can have neither? It's almost as if they were playing tire roulette, and the house always wins. One can only imagine the conversation. Mediums, too mainstream, softs, now that's edgy. Lando Norris. Ever the team player, fully embraced this strategy. After all, why win when you can provide endless content for social media with your dejected radio messages? Third place is the new first, haven't you heard? His post-race interview, he tried to smile through gritted teeth, was particularly Oscar-worthy. It's truly remarkable how Norris continues to make the wrong calls and throw away victories, despite having the fastest car. One might think he's allergic to the top step of the podium. Perhaps he should consider a career in professional coin flipping, where his decision-making skills might be more appreciated. Just a reminder, had he pitted for mediums, he would have been two seconds per lap faster by the end of the race, which you know would have handed him the victory since Lewis only finished one second ahead of Max. It's truly remarkable Lando consistently manages to make the wrong call at every critical moment. One might think it's a skill in itself to be so reliably incorrect. Whether it's choosing the wrong tires, watching strategy calls, or simply finding new and innovative ways to not win, Norris has elevated poor decision-making to an art form. It's almost as if he has a magic eight ball that always lands on make the worst possible choice. Perhaps McLaren should consider inverting whatever Norris suggests. It might accidentally lead them to victory. One might argue that Norris should be neck and neck with our reigning champion, Max Verstappen, at this point in the championship. But where's the fun in that? Instead, Norris has graciously decided to showcase his unique talents in anti-racecraft and decision-making par excellent. Let's review his greatest hits, shall we? At Imola, he demonstrated his tire preservation skills by failing to pass Verstappen despite having fresher rubber. Truly inspirational. In Canada, he treated us to not one two mistakes in wet conditions. And just to spice things up, he decided to pit a lap too late. Because why make one mistake when you can make three? Spain was a particular highlight, where he put on a spectacular show of taking too long to George Russell. The crowds were on the edge of their seats, watching a faster car fail to pass a slower one. Riveting stuff. The Austria sprint race was a tour de force in how to lose a position with style. A beautiful dive bomb resulting in a terrible exit, losing to Verstappen even with DRS, and then getting outfoxed by his own teammate. It's not often we see such a perfect trifecta of errors. And let's not forget the main event in Austria. Well, actually let's... Some performances are too magnificent for words. Meanwhile, Verstappen, in what is clearly the third fastest car on the grid, continues to coast towards his fourth world championship. It's almost as if consistency and good decision making matter more than raw speed sometimes. Who would have thought? Let's not forget Oscar Piastri, who was clearly having too much fun leading the race. McLaren in their infinite wisdom, decided to put a stop to that nonsense. Can't have the rookie outshining the veteran, can we? No, sir. That would be far too logical. Meanwhile, Mercedes provided us with a touching display of teamwork. George Russell, realizing that his teammate Lewis Hamilton hadn't won in a while, graciously decided to bow out with a hydraulic issue. What a 
Gentlemen, it's almost as if the car sensed the narrative and decided to play along. And Hamilton, ever the opportunist, sees this chance with all the enthusiasm of a man who's never won a race before. But what about Max Verstappen? He managed to finish second in what is clearly no longer the fastest car on the grid. He's been carrying that Red Bull, probably the third fastest car now, to finishing ahead of Norris every race. Truly remarkable. Ferrari, not to be outdone in the realm of strategic brilliance, made sure their drivers had plenty of time to admire the British countryside. Why race when you can sightsee? Charles Leclerc, in particular, seemed to enjoy this approach, finishing a leisurely 14th. One can only imagine the conversation in the Ferrari garage. Points? No, no, we've had enough of those this season. In a stunning display of consistency, Ferrari once again put Leclerc on the wrong tire, echoing their masterful strategy from Canada. It's almost as if they're trying to turn race strategy into an abstract art form. Who needs a good result when you can have a beautifully crafted disaster? Sergio Perez starting from the pit lane provided us with a masterclass in how to navigate through the field without actually overtaking anyone. It's a subtle art really. His journey from last to second to last was particularly gripping. As for the commentary, it was a joy to behold. The sheer excitement in their voices as they described Hamilton's lead was palpable. One might have thought he was lapping the entire field. Such was their enthusiasm. It's almost as if they forgot there were other drivers in the race. But hey, congrats to Lewis for keeping it on the track and preserving those tires during the rain and during the final stint. He got lucky that Russell was out. But luck is part of the sport, as Miami and Canada shows. And now, ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes upon the pinnacle of motorsport mathematics, the driver's championship standings. For those of you keeping score at home, Verstappen's championship lead is now roughly the size of Jupiter, with a measly 255 points. Clearly he's struggling to make an impact this season. Perhaps he should consider trying harder. It's not like he has an 84-point lead or anything. Again, he extends his lead by not even winning. Following closely, and by closely, I mean not at all, is Lando Norris with 171 points. It seems all those podium finishes and strategic masterstrokes have really paid off. Who needs wins when you can consistently come behind Max? Charles Leclerc sits in third with 150 points, proving that Ferrari's stellar strategy is really working wonders. Oh now, I was being sarcastic. Carlos Sainz is hot on Leclerc's heels with 146 points. It's heartwarming to see such fierce intra-team competition. I'm sure Ferrari is thrilled. Oscar Piastri, the young sensation, has managed to amass 124 points. Not bad for someone who's only been in F1 for... Oh, wait. He's in the second fastest car. Never mind. And then we have Sergio Perez, valiantly holding on to sixth place with 118 points. Sure he won't get sacked for the end of the season, right? The Mercedes duo of Russell and Hamilton are battling it out for seventh and eighth. It's nice to see the seven-time world champion keeping things interesting by staying in the bottom half of the top one. Danger. But again, hey, congrats on the win. It's been three years. As for the rest of the field, well, they're also participating. Alonso and Strodel are keeping Aston Martin's hopes alive, while Hulkenberg continues to demonstrate why he's known as the Hulk. And let's not forget the valiant efforts of Zhu and Sargent at the bottom of the table. Zero points is a number two after all. In conclusion, this championship battle is clearly anyone's game. I mean if Verstappen were to miss the next four races and Norris were to win them all while setting fastest laps, 
We might actually have a contest on our hands. The suspense is killing me. Bah. Real. This has been your comprehensive, totally unbiased review of the 2024 British Grand Prix. Thank you for your attention and remember, in F1, expect the unexpected. Unless you're McLaren, then expect the inexplicable. <laughs>